Hi, welcome to Great Gardens. Today's show we're going to talk about vegetable gardening. It is one of the favorite things to do for many of us in the United States. We can't wait for spring and to get our hands into the soils. We're going to talk to Diane Lulick up at the Western Nurseries Vegetable Garden and she's going to show us all sorts of techniques for everything from siting the vegetable garden to begin with, proper soil preparation, and then various types of vegetables and how to plant them. So let's go along and talk to Diane. Hi Diane, how are you today? Hi Peter, I'm good. This is a fabulous site for a vegetable garden. Uh, we're standing in this garden in the back of Western Nurseries that we built, I don't know, about 10 years ago now. And we've planted it out every year and it's just seemed, it just seems to produce great, not only vegetables but, but fruits around the edges with raspberries mm -hmm. and whatnot. Well, what makes this such a great site do you think, Diane? Well, uh, it's full sun and vegetables need at least six to seven hours of full sun a day which is uh, optimum for uh, such a short season that these vegetables have. Uh, the other good thing about this site is it's got a lot of room. We can really fit a lot of things in here. When you start to plant, you've got to plan your garden, plan what you want to have for vegetables and what you're going to keep planting through the season. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have that's beneficial up here is a lot of good soil because we've been working on it throughout the year. Let's talk about the soils in a second, but before we do, this is a fence and I guess we've got some wire around it. So this has been successful in keeping the rabbits, maybe not the chipmunks, but most of the rodents or the well, we furry a, woodland creatures out, We have right? a groundhog issue, but... Oh, we do? <laughs> yeah, but we're working on it. Okay, so a good site is full sun at least six, six and a half, seven hours a day, fenced in, mm -hmm. and then the soils. Let's go in and look at some soils over here. Um, I don't remember back to when we built this, but I do remember it was very thick layer uh, probably at least 10 inches thick of, of soil that we brought in here. Would you say that's kind of the minimum you would want? Yeah, uh, you need room for the roots to grow. And as you can see, this is kind of heaped up on the uh, edge from the walkway right there. So the raised bed, the lower walkway, mm -hmm. and... Uh, that way you can add what you want into the soil. Yep, a little easier to reach in perhaps when it's raised as and well. the less you walk on it, the better. So when we plan, we plan walking spaces and planting spaces. You don't want to compact the soil around the roots. Okay. So do you rotate the soil every year to start off? Either no, manually actually, or with the machine? No, actually we don't. Um, later wisdom, it says the less you disrupt that natural kind of lasagna layer, mm. the better it is. You don't disrupt the worms, you don't disrupt the mycorrhiza. In fact, we're going to add some mycorrhiza to the soil. Now mycorrhiza are um, uh, microscopic um, microbes that, uh, you know when you go in the forest and you dig down and you mm -hmm. get all those little tiny roots? Yeah. Those are mycorrhizae. What they do is they feed off the sugars on the roots of the plant mm -hmm. and then they fix the nitrogen into mm -hmm. the soil. Mm -hmm. They also hold water around the roots. So it's making, almost making your soil as rich as forest soil. Mm -hmm. Now nobody goes in the forest and turns over that soil. It has a natural layering mm -hmm. and decomposition going on. So we can help that out by adding that and it forms those kind of layers that's over correct. time. That's correct. That's correct. So, so that's you don't generally come in and you. tear up the soils and rototill it and add soil amendments every year, but you do want to add some things? We do add of the soil amendments. It's always good to add compost, a good rich compost. Um, are you doing that throughout or are you doing that around the plant in the vegetable garden? Throughout. 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 You um, Also, as you'll notice, we have uh, grass clippings and newspaper around, that gets turned under as well. Okay. And a cover crop in the spring. Okay, so you don't necessarily rotate till it real deep, but you turn it in a little Just bit on the surface. Just as you were doing with the shovel Just with the right shovel, here. not with mm -hmm. the mechanical layer. Okay. Right. So that's a little less work. What about lime? I've always heard of people using lime, especially for lawns, but do you use it on vegetable gardens? If you have oak trees around your gardens, yes. If you use oak leaves in your mulch, in your compost, okay. yes. But so to keep it less acidic, use right. lime now and then right. if you think you have that issue. Okay, do you right. test for the pH or that's um, getting too scientific? No, you can. People okay. do. And there's, it's more than just the acidity that you're testing for. A lot of vegetables like tomatoes need calcium mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. magnesium to mm -hmm. grow. But I figure if you're adding a good soil, a good mm -hmm. compost, like some of the composts we have, like the Costa Maine lobster compost yep. is really good. Yep. And because it has the shells in it, yep. it has calcium in it. So okay. you know you're putting something. So a good well-drained soil, not too much on the clay side, not right. too much on the sandy side, a lot of organic. Right. Okay. And right. years of doing that, I've always heard, produces better vegetables. Absolutely. If you get in the habit of doing that. Absolutely. Okay. So here we are, uh, mid-season. 
We already mm -hmm. planted some things that we'll show in a minute, but we've got tomatoes, which are fine to plant in the mid-season in New England. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't you show us how you're going to plant the tomatoes, and we'll talk about that. Okay, well, first thing we're going to do is, um, normally we plan this out and put a whole bunch of tomatoes in, but we're mm -hmm. just starting here, so okay. um, loosening up the soil. And I'm going to add a little granulated manure here in the hole because tomatoes are very heavy feeders. Okay. Right in the hole. Yep. Not even mixed in. Oh, I'm going to mix it in. Okay. That's a 100% organic. Granulated fertilizer. 5-3, 2.5. Okay. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, a little of everything. And because tomatoes are such heavy feeders, this is an all we're going to put in there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stir that in. Make a nice deep hole. Yeah. I'm going to hand you a plant. Okay, well first I'm going to get the Dr. Earth mycorrhiza. Oh, okay. Just for tomatoes you recommend this? or No, this is for all vegetables all in vegetables. your garden. Okay. Yep, and it's good stuff. It's organic. Um, it has the mycorrhizae right in it. They and I need see it to also be... has an NPK value that's higher than what you just used. Yep. And that's okay to double up like that? Absolutely. Because this is pelletized and because this is mycorrhiza, okay. they're not going to all be accessible at the same time. All right. So if it were a 30-30-30, you would not want to use as much as you did, but it's a low, it's an well, organic Well, if it's a 30-30-30, then you know that it's... Um, it's a long time release. It's going to take, because no plant can deal with that all at once. Yeah. So we want something that's quick. And the lower numbers mean that it's more accessible, often water soluble. Oh, okay. So here we have a tomato that's been in a pot its whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tight in there, but that's okay. All right, now, do you see how much stem we have here? Yeah. In order to make, and, and you got to pick off the dead stuff. In order to make this stem get stronger to hold up the plant when it's heavy with fruit, we're going to plant it deep. Okay. And this is totally against the way you plant woody ornamental right. shrubs in the landscape. Right. So it's different with tomatoes. But the lifespan of this tomato is a couple sure. of months. Yeah. So we're going to loosen up those roots. And could you get me that watering sure. can? Put some water in the hole. Those mycorrhizae have to be in contact with the soil and water in order to wake up, basically. Okay. So, we're going to plant this very deep in here. And as you saw, there's, there's um, food in the backfill as well. Yep. Now, see these, these little nodes? And the main reason for planting it deep is so that it supports it, it'll itself. Make that self, it'll make that plant thicker. Okay. Now let me show you on another plant a couple of things to do. I pulled one out over here that has lots of things going on. See how many things are growing under here? Yeah. Now, um, move it out so you can see it. These are called suckers. Mm -hmm. They come out here and these uh, take the strength. Now tomatoes are vines. There's determinate, which are your patio tomatoes, and they only get to a certain size. Okay. And then there's indeterminate, which are tomatoes that grow like a vine, and they'll keep growing as long as they can. So you want to give these guys the food. You don't want to waste it on suckers and little things. So you take all these off, because you're going to plant this tomato up here anyway. Okay. So these are unnecessary. So if I was going to plant this, and there's another sucker, so I'm going to take that off. And then... Tomatoes often get disease from water splashing on them. Okay. So you water the soil. You don't water the plant. Okay. Because you don't want this to get moldy. Okay. And as the plant gets bigger, you remove these lower ones so that the top can be strong and healthy. Okay. Now, if it does get it on the lower branches, the mold, does it, does it spread upward sometimes? It does. Absolutely. So you really want to avoid and that. And it spreads to the next plant. Okay. So you, and you, you can tell when the leaves get yellow and they get little holes in them. See, there's another little sucker I'm going to take off. Want me to dig the hole? Yep. Right about here. How far apart should it be um, from the next one? Depends what you're using for a structure, but that's good. About two and a half feet, three yep. feet? Okay. Okay. I'm going to add 
couple handfuls of this. Mm -hmm. There's a scoop if you want. About that? Yep. And then the mycorrhiza. Yep, now stir it all around stir with your around. shovel. A little bit of water. Okay. Now we're going to plant it deep. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take off one more. And I just pinched it right off. That's mm -hmm. all. Loosen up the roots a little bit. Place it down in there. When, when you can squeeze your soil and it holds together, that's good. That's the right moisture. That's a good thing. That also means it has enough um, organic stuff in it to keep that moisture in. Because not only do the organics hold the moisture uh, next to the plant, they feed it as well. So, you know, having moisture in the soil is a good thing. Right. Now, tomatoes, do they need a lot of watering? They do. They need a lot of watering, and they also need a lot of feeding, as do you we make had a, mentioned. Do you make a ring around it? I see you're doing yep. that right now to hold mm -hmm. the water. Yep. So just like with a, uh, a landscaping planting, you do the same thing with your tomatoes. Right. Makes it a little easier to water. Also, then you get less runoff and less waste. Yep. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to water this. Now, I'm not going to water the plant, I'm only going to water the roots, and that is critical. What about when it rains? Can't do much about that. That's okay, because the sun's not shining, it's not going to burn it. I see. And uh, usually, um, it's better to water either early morning or late afternoon, e early evening. That way the sun's not going to fry the plants. Right. And the water's not all going to evaporate, evaporate right out of it. Now, do you water every day, twice a day in the first few weeks? If we have weather week? like this, you have to water every day. Yeah, above now, 80 degrees, water every day. Right. There are a few things you can do to hold the moisture into the soil. Okay. One thing that I like to do is create a mulch. Just using newspaper. With strips of newspaper. And I rip about the distance between the plants, like this. And then to make it look nice and to hold the newspaper down, usually you do this, you water first. You gotta get the newspaper wet. Okay. And this will hold the moisture down and keep the weeds down. So you water your newspaper as well. That won't blow away? Nope. It's going to be heavy and soaked. Usually you do this after you've watered your entire garden. Right. Um, and then what we do is we put some grass clippings on top of that to hold it down. It makes it look nice. See, it hides the newspaper. Very good. That yeah, I think way. weeding is one of the biggest deterrents for most people, the vegetable garden, and this will really minimize the weeding when you that's do the, right. the double layer of the newspaper and the grass clippings. I that's like that right. idea. That's right. And I, I don't do it right up to the plant because I want the air to circulate to make mm -hmm. sure none of the mm -hmm. molds and mildews go to the mm -hmm. tomatoes. So basically, in a nutshell, that's it. that didn't take very long. Picture it out over a big area and you got yourself a nice tomato section. Now, we're going to talk more about specific types of vegetables, so let's go over and see what you planted out earlier today. Okay. Tomatoes, 55 to 75 days till harvest. Mm -hmm. Same with so many other vegetables in the garden, such as eggplant, uh, peppers, we've got squash here. And on the flip side of things, we've got plants that take 20 or 30 days till harvest, such That's as a lot true. of the plants you use in your salads. I Let's have. talk about what we can do there. To got some radishes right here. Radishes. So you've used a term, I like this term, called succession planting. Tell us what that means. Because some plants have such a shorter lifespan, they're done and you still have so much summer left. So you might as well plant several crops. Okay. Um, and you typically do that on the edge of where your longer term crops are. Right. Right. So you can access them. You can work the soil. You can get in and out of there. Certain things you plant early, like lettuces, they like cool weather. Mm-hmm. But then you wouldn't plant lettuce in the heat of July or August, so mm -hmm. you can plant radishes. They can handle the heat. And it's only 20 
two days till harvest on mm -hmm. that. You can also eat the radish sprouts. And it's like really helpful. Once you salad. get into this, you find it's easier than you think because it really tells you everything you need to right. know right on the back of these packages here. 22 days to harvest, one uh, half inch depth. And radishes, you can do that two or three times throughout the, the at year. least, at least, yeah. and, and even into September. Okay. Because they they take less than a month to um, to harvest. Okay, let's see how you do it. So I'm going to rough up the soil a little bit with my action hoe. And that's great for weeding too. I use this that at home for weeding. This is fantastic because it cuts the roots right off the plants, yeah. the, the weeds. We'll do a little short area right here. Okay. Just want to. Get it, uh, and th these will go down a little bit farther just to loosen it up. We don't plant that deep, but we want to loosen it because the uh, the roots are going to go down. But you're not loosening it six inches in, only a few. I just a few. Here. Okay. I mean, this soil has been turned over and amended already. Okay. But I just want to loosen it up for the new seeds to germinate. Put a little of our Dr. Earth in there. I'll open this packet up for you in the meantime. This is our mycorrhiza. Okay. We want to get this stirred in. Mycorrhiza seem to come on in recent years, and you're a big believer in it, aren't you? Yes, I am. I think they're fantastic. And you've seen the, the differences with yes, using it. Yes, absolutely. Um, not just for vegetables, but for trees and shrubs as well, because you're giving them the optimum environment. So I'm making a half an inch little ridge in our soil here. I've opened that up for you. And. They're small, mm -hmm. so you don't want to put too many in at once because they'll What's all germinate. The spacing it's So says I try to space them to start like About an inch in. apart? Yeah. And you just drop them in. You get more than one row per, per package, too. Oh, so. yeah, you got a lot left. Yeah. So we could. This is what my kids crop. like to do, by the way. Yes. <laughs> they like this part. Yeah. All the preparation, they don't like that too much. This is the fun part. This way, if you plant them this far apart, you don't have to thin them. And we can put these ones back in the okay. back in the bag. And then I just gently put the soil back. I like to mark the end of the row with something, just so I know where I started. And just tuck this back in. Because they only need a half an inch over them. Not too much. And then a little water. Don't tamper it down or anything. Um, the water will do that for okay. us. Okay. So yeah, but this along. is the end of the row. Okay. Just pour it now right there's along. no, there's no, yeah, there's no um, diffuser on this. Yeah, so but be that's careful. Good. Scatter it about a little bit. Yep. And these will be up in three to four days. You'll see a little row of green double leaves, and you can actually eat them at that point if you want. The tops. Yep, the greens. The, the just the baby sprouts, but then you'd have to plant some more. So soak it pretty good here? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and you do that again just like the tomatoes every day at least once yeah. if it's over 80 yeah. degrees. Okay. Exactly. All right, well good. So let's now go over and talk about vegetables, not vegetables, I'm sorry, let's talk about um, herbs. Herbs. And we'll okay. take a look at some various options with herbs. Okay. That's over this way. Get my big shovel. All right, so we're going to talk about herbs. We talked about vegetables, and now we're going to talk about herbs. And I love my herb garden. It's right outside my kitchen window. And I can, all year, after I plant it, watch the herbs and watch when they're ready and know that I'm going to use my rosemary or my sage or my, you know, my, my uh, uh, oregano uh, in my, my, my recipes. So here we are, and this could be right outside your kitchen window. And you've prepared the soils already, and you've got various assortment of herbs here. Some herbs will make it through the winter actually and are perennials, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. some aren't, some are annuals. Around here, oregano, sage, thyme, um, lemon balm, well chives come back every year. Chives, yeah. And uh, lavender, mm -hmm. they all come back. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do in the winter time is I go out in my garden, I move the snow mm -hmm. and I pick the oregano. Oh, do you? In the winter. <laughs> my yeah. rosemary that I planted last year survived. And nice. that was the first time I've seen that. It was probably because we had a lot of snow yeah. over the winter. Nice insulation. It. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what you want to do when you plant your herb garden. Well, 
I'm going to plant the dill in the back because it's very tall and it's already starting to go to seed, go to flower, and then go to seed. It will drop seeds which will take hold for next year. So while itself is not a perennial, it is self-sowing and um, it's kind of nice because it's so you can a gift that keeps on giving. Dill coming up next spring. That's true. If you plant it this, this that year. That is true. So same as any other plant, you kind of tease the roots out a little bit, get rid of the dead stuff, and plant it in there. Get it a little established. Now the plant itself, will it send out more new growth? So you can it keep will. clipping it and keep using it, it in will. your salads? If you cut the whole thing down, it's gone. But if you take little bits of the greens, mm -hmm. it'll keep branching out. Okay. And it will last until frost. The flowers, you can also cut them, let them dry upside down, and you'll have dill seed. Oh, okay. In case you like to make pickles or uh, anything like that. But they also will fall to the ground and self-seed for the following year. Okay. So the bigger herbs in the back and the smaller ones in the front, just like right. the landscape planting. Right. Another favorite annual herb is basil. Basil, yep. Everybody and that'll get pretty basil. wide. It will. This will. This variety actually will turn kind of into a little shrub. So we'll give that one a little bit of space. Yeah. But by the time that one's ready, this will be down. Exactly. To the ground, so. Yep. This too, you can pick the leaves off and use them as you need, rather than cutting down the whole plant. Right. I would guess you're going to do the rosemary next. Yeah, we'll put that. And you don't mind if these kind of grow into each other a little, do you? No, because these won't be even be here next year. The rosemary will take our chances, and maybe it will, so let's put that one in the back. Right about here? Yeah. Okay. Some herbs are planted in these little cocoa fiber things. Apparently, you can plant them in their little... You know, I noticed it didn't break down as much as I thought I would. That's why I peel them off. Yeah, I peel them <laughs> off too. They're easy. Easy. So it's it's your choice either way, but I find that they don't break down either. Now that's a sage? This is a sage. Okay. This is a, a golden sage. Okay. But see how quickly they plant up, but they'll keep giving all summer long. Right about here? Yep. Okay. in case you forget. Now you're not putting the mycorrhizae in here, is that okay? I already did. Ah, you already worked it in. Yep. There this we go. The oregano. We'll put that in the front or toward the front. That's going to spread actually, so let's put that one over here. Okay. Because that one will come up year after year. So I prepared a little space for it right there. Right here. This is kind of the perennial zone. Yes. I like that variegated one. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yep. So there we go, instant herb garden. Okay, so that's what you do. Doesn't need much space, and uh, some of them will uh, seed in for the next year. Some of them will actually survive the winter. It's kind of like a, the fruit trees or the raspberries you see around the border here. You've got a perennial aspect to your vegetable garden. And you like to do that around the edges. We have the blackberries, we have golden raspberries, red raspberries, and we have blueberries on that side. Very nice, very yeah. nice. Well, Diane, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you, Diane. That was terrific. I have a great site in my yard. Now I just have to do all the work and you showed me how to do it. I appreciate that. One thing Diane touched on was watering techniques. We're now going to go see Anwell in our Did You Know segment. She's going to talk a little bit more about watering techniques. Now's the time to think about watering. There are five really simple points, just five things to remember. The first one is remember to water regularly and deeply. Your goal is to get in a vegetable garden, perennial garden, the moisture down about eight inches deep. So reliably, moist soils eight inches deep. For shrubs and trees, especially newly planted ones, you want it to be moist the entire depth of that original root ball. So that's the idea of going nice and deep. 
The idea of being uh, giving water regularly means usually once weekly, but keep in mind that newly planted plants, you're going to be watering more frequently, maybe a little less deeply, but more frequently, and you're going to allow extra for hot weather and quick draining soils. The second thing to remember, number two, is that now you have to water this year, but also for new shrubs and trees, their first full year in the ground. So if you planted this year, remember that next year you have to water the entire season as well. And remember to water through November. That's the very best insurance, particularly for evergreens and broadleaf evergreens, so that they'll be successful coming out of the following winter. So, so far we've got regular and deep and through November. For the third point, remember to water at the base of the plant. This way you're actually saving water. You're targeting where it needs to go and you're helping prevent fungal diseases by keeping the foliage as dry as possible. And for the fourth point, I think watering with a hose is the most efficient. For big plants, you can leave it on a dribble right at the base of the tree or the shrub and walk away. Go do something else. You don't have to be a slave to that hose. For smaller plants, you may want to stand there holding it. You have to stand there holding it. Um, but remember that above all, irrigation systems, drip systems, and soaker hoses and lawn sprinklers, whether they're the whirligig kind or oscillating kind, should be viewed as backups, not the primary source of water. And the fifth thing to remember, which I think is the most reassuring for people trying to figure out how much and when, is that your fingers will never lie to you. If in doubt, stick them in the dirt, about four inches deep for smaller plants, as deep as you can get them for bigger plants, so four to six inches. If it's cool and moist, don't water, but check again the next day. These will always tell you whether it's cool and moist. And that's it. Just make sure that you water regularly and through November. Bye. Thank you, Ann. That was some great advice on watering. We appreciate that. Well, thank you for watching the show. If you have any topics you'd like for us to cover on future shows, please send us an email. And until next time, we'll see you on Great Gardens. For the trees on our street. At my campground. We promise to not move firewood. Because the emerald ash borer beetle could be inside. You move firewood, you spread the beetle. We promise to not move firewood. Join us at StopTheBeetle.info.